Good morning, everybody. Very warm welcome to each one of you to our first service in this brand new year. And so let me just take this opportunity to say to you all, Happy New Year to you. May this year be a blessed year for all of you and your families. Uh, there are a few things I need to bring to your attention. Most of the intimations were on the screen. Uh, just a few uh, things I need to bring to your attention. Coffee morning, which takes place on Tuesday, uh, will restart this week on the 9th. So if you have time, please do come along. 10 to 12 is said, but uh, sometimes we finish early, don't we? Um, although it should be yeah, something like that. So please come along on Tuesday morning. Um, Bible study uh, or learning together uh, group uh, meets every Wednesday uh, 7 p.m. in the vestry. Um, although this week uh, will uh, not start, uh, we'll start the following week because uh, we have a joint session meeting with the old parish, so um, we would have to go there. So uh, that will give you another week to think about. Uh, the Wednesday, seven o'clock in the vestry. Um, and then, uh, just before I bring um, uh, two more th things to your attention, um, let me just uh, uh, say this this morning. I got this information. I knew that uh, Mary Clement, you would remember Andy Clement, Mary Clement. Andy Clement passed away a few years ago at that time. Uh, and their family uh, were thinking of taking um, uh, Mary to Dumfries uh, nursing home somewhere there, and they did. Uh, this morning I got the news that uh, Mary uh, Clements passed away. Um, she was 93. So, uh, uh, and that's in Dumfries, obviously, and uh, service will, uh, will be held there. And so just to let you know, uh, to think about Mary Clements and her family uh, and keep them in your prayers at this time. Two other things. Um, yesterday I visited Anne uh, Scott and she is still in hospital, uh, but uh, feeling a bit better on one side. On the other side, she is now uh, waiting for her operation that will take place in Jubilee Hospital. Uh, and so she has not got the definitive date yet, uh, but uh, we are hoping that this will happen this week at some point. And so she will be moved to Jubilee Hospital. I'll keep you up to, uh, up to date on uh, all the development uh, to that end. but. She was uh, very thankful for prayers and uh, uh, your messages, but she was saying to me uh, that, please pass this on to, to everybody, that she is not uh, you know, replying the messages. One can understand that. Um, and so uh, she's very thoughtful and uh, thinking of you as you all are thinking of Anne Scott. Scott. Continue to pray for her. Jim and their families. Uh, one more uh, thing, uh, Jennifer Gailey, you would uh, all uh, know that she um, has had an operation now of, uh, on her eye. An operation went very well uh, and uh, she has another appointment on Tuesday to kind of post operation appointment. All being well, she would be here next week. Thank you. Uh, I think these are the things the moment to uh, bring to your attention. If there is anything else, please do let me know and I will announce. If not, uh, then let us turn our attention to worshipping God. Our call to worship is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5. This is one of the very famous uh, Psalms uh, which talks about renewed strength. Uh, and so the psalmist says, Praise the Lord, my soul, 
all my being praise his holy name praise the lord my soul and do not forget how kind he is he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases he keeps me from the grave and blesses me with love and mercy he fills my life with good things so that i stay young and strong like an eagle amen let us raise our voices and worship god with this first hymn mission praise number 7 all creatures of our god and king
we come now uh, together in prayer. Let us pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in this new year. We come before you as your people whom you have called to be your disciples. And through us, you have a purpose to fulfill. We are so privileged of belonging to your family. Not because we were good, but because you are good, you are gracious. And because of your grace, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, so that we can belong to you. Through him, we are your children, young and old alike. We are called to be your people. And so we are grateful for all the things that you have done for us and with us and through us in the previous year. And here we are, the beginning of this new year, seeking to honor you, to live the life that may be pleasing to you, at the same time, looking forward to the opportunities that you may bring to us to show your love, your compassion to people around us. Knowing that we are weak, we do things in our own ways, and many a times that doesn't bring glory to your name. Lord, we humbly come before you and acknowledge our weakness, but also look forward to your strength, your spirit to continue to dwell in us, to purify our hearts, to strengthen us, to bring glory to your name in the days ahead. So Lord, forgive us what we should not have done, what we should not have said, but also to equip us to be the best that we can. We ask your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us, to challenge us. We thank you for the opportunity that we can freely worship you in this country. And we ask you to, Lord, bless us. Bless us so that we may be a blessing to others. Receive our worship as we sing, read, pray, listen. All of it may be acceptable to you. We ask this all through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught his disciples saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Haggai, uh, that's in the Old Testament, uh, uh, and it is 
chapter 1 starting from verse 1 to verse 15 During the second year that Darius was emperor of Persia on the first day of the sixth month the Lord spoke through the prophet Haggai The message was for the governor of Judah Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel and for the high priest Joshua son of Jehozadak The Lord Almighty said to Haggai These people say that this is not the right time to rebuild the, t- the temple The Lord then gave this message to the people through the prophet Haggai My people why should you be living in well-built houses while my temple lies in ruins Don't you see what is happening to you You have planted much grain but have harvested very little You have food to eat but not enough to make you full You have wine to drink but not enough to get drunk on You have clothing but not enough to keep you warm And workers cannot earn enough to live on Can't you see why this has happened Now go up into the hills get lumber and rebuild the temple then i will be pleased and will be worshiped as i should be you hoped for large harvests but they turned out to be small and when you brought the harvest home i blew it away why did i do that because my temple lies in ruins while every one of you is busy working on your own house that is why there is no rain and nothing can grow i have brought drought on the land on its hills grain fields vineyards and olive orchards on every crop the ground produces on people and animals on everything you try to grow then zerubbabel and joshua and all the people who had returned from the exile in babylonia did what the lord their god told them to do They were afraid and obeyed the prophet Haggai the Lord's messenger. Then Haggai gave the Lord's message to the people. I will be with you. That is my promise. The Lord inspired everyone to work on the temple. Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, Joshua the high priest, and all the people who had returned from the exile. They began working on the temple of the Lord Almighty their God. on the 24th day of the 6th month of the second year that Darius was emperor amen and may god add his blessing to this reading of his holy word before we uh, think about uh, these verses let us once again worship god and this time we sing mission praise number 560 praise my soul the king of heaven <laughs>
Our modern culture is characterized by a hectic pace and self-centeredness. You know, with busy work schedules, uh, frequent travel, and uh, uh, a plethora of uh, entertainment uh, options that we have, people often fail to take time to reflect on their own lives. And they don't spend enough time thinking about their goals and practices and purposes and relationship with God. Their spiritual well-being and the importance of uh, spiritual matters. You know, there is an old adage uh, you might uh, know or you remember uh, is that if the devil can't make you bad, he will make you busy. If he can't make you bad, he will make you busy. And I think this is probably uh, never been more true than in this 21st century. Or put it another way, um, Chuck Swindle, a very famous uh, preacher and uh, writer, has written, he says, we are often so caught up in and around our activities that we tend to worship our work, work at our play, and play at our worship. Let me just read it again. It says, we are often so caught up, caught up in and around our activities that we tend to worship our work, work at our play, and play at our work. Christians are neglecting their own spiritual lives as well as the body of Christ, the church. And by church, I don't mean just the, the building. And much of this comes from being busy in their own life and work and not considering their ways and the ways of God. Reading this morning invites us to reconsider all of that. Let me just give you a brief uh, context to this reading. You know, the story of Haggai begins... Um, long before he came to actually preach. You know, the people of Judah, or southern kingdom, had been invaded uh, by the Babylonians and they were carried off to Babylon, hundreds and thousands of captives. Uh, and that took place in three phases. First phase was 605 BC, then six, uh, 597 BC, and the third one was 586-87 BC. So this all happened between 506 to 586 BC. As you can imagine, many people who were taken away, they were in a foreign land. They were exiles. And their own homeland was always on their minds. They were un living under foreign powers. So understandably, their morale is very low. But then, as Jeremiah had predicted, some 50 to 70 years after their exile, actually from 506, God brought a new king, King Darius, and God stirred up his heart to send these exiles back to their land. And this we can read in the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. 
these surviving exiles came back to Jerusalem and were even given the supplies for building the temple of the Lord by this a gentile king and so under the leadership of a governor called Zerubbabel and then the priest Ezra these Jews about 50000 of them came to Jerusalem with excitement and with hopefulness and so as they came back they started building the temple of the lord they started building their own hometown and of course their own houses however they soon realized that they might not be able to replicate the grandeur of the previous temple called the solomon's temple to which people used to come from all over the world to see the beautiful structure and the glory of that temple these new people looked back and they were disillusioned because they realized that they would not be able to replicate that glory there was once a massive and an all striking structure unfortunately the current builders are unable to match its former glory and so their spirits were low so adding to their troubles they are surrounded by detractors opposition people who were actively discouraging people not to build the temple of the lord they passively and actively both ways detracted people from this particular purpose of building the church if you want to say that way building the temple of the lord where people could worship these detractors have even bribed the counselors against them to frustrate their purpose as we read it in Ezra the book of Ezra chapter 4 verses 4 to 5 so in a way they were asking people you can have something from us favor or money but do not work on the church do not work on the house of god let it remain in ruins the people had started off in obedience to god and excitement about worshiping him seeking to honor him but their zeal quickly cooled down they had just laid the foundation of the temple when they stopped altogether and they left behind these or those good intentions you know sometimes we have good intentions but they never really materialized there is a doctrine or the saying in islam actually that all our acts depend on our intentions by here a false flat that is not true we can have good intentions but never be able to really carry these good intentions out they don't guarantee our actions and so the case is with this a group of people who came back from babylon and then hagai and zechariah began preaching with a very particular concern to encourage the people to begin again 
to renew their commitment to seek the Lord by rebuilding the temple. And and they say, don't don't be afraid. That does not mean that they they, they, they are going to be, you know, without fear at all. Don't be afraid is another way of saying, come on. Don't think about the difficulties only. The Lord is with you. And so, these prophets encourage them to think again. Restart. Pick up the work from there where they had left off. I think we are very much like them. We often begin well in our spiritual pursuits and even sometimes other pursuits like at the beginning of a new year all have some kinds of plans or loosely said plans some want to work on their health that only goes another week or two and then back to the same thing but same thing with spiritual pursuits and then people get distracted, weary, or desires for comfort and ease slowly overtake us. The message of Haggai is a call to God's people for spiritual renewal. Recommitting ourselves to obedience to God along with God's encouragement. I think this would be a good place to start this brand new year. Recommitting ourselves. Thinking about the spiritual pursuits and our spiritual health. You know, the message of Haggai comes in four stages. In other words, four sermons given over roughly four months. Each of these sermons has a clear theme. You know, first begins with a challenge, then encouragement, then instruction, and then promise. And I'm going to talk about all these four sermons this morning. So, you might be sitting here for another hour and a half. Not really. First one is a challenge. It says, do you see what is happening to you? That's a very specific personal question that he put forward. In order for them to reconsider, do you know what's happening to you? He says. This is the whole first chapter about that. And so, I think this will be a good thing to think about. Do you know what is happening to you and to your life? You know, the Lord rebukes the people of Israel. They had started rebuilding the temple. They had just laid the foundation when opposition arose. And rather than pressing on, they walked away and found it easier to work to improve their own homes and built up their own wealth. Now, some of us might say, what is so wrong about building your own houses and uh, your uh, own life uh, and resources. Well, actually, it's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is neglecting the temple. These people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. And if they plan to get around to it eventually, but not while there is opposition and discouragement. They say, 
let's add panels to our own houses and so they divert their attention to home improvement projects and personal wealth accumulation and this they try to do through agriculture in other words they have a priority disorder and that is i think a disease of this postmodern world what should be number 1 on our priority list goes down or way down the list and what is way down the list or should be way down the list comes up right there and we think maybe eventually if we get round if there is no opposition if everything goes easy and smooth then we will think about it this priority disorder needs to be looked at the lord says do you know what is happening to you in verse 4 the lord says why should you be living in well built houses while my temple lies in ruins don't you see what is happening to you think very carefully about what you are doing and then god poses a question to them and that is why you know in verse 9 you see this he says you are hoped for large harvests but they tend out to be small and when you brought the harvest home i blew it away why did i do that because my temple is in ruins while every one of you is busy working on your own home you know considering the passage this morning what was the basic problem and i have mentioned that alluded to it they prioritized personal gains in short term wealth and comfort over and above loving obedience and worshiping god that was the problem you know god brought them to to where they were he brought them out of captivity to their own land caused the king to provide the resources for their living and building the temple and here they are working on their own projects rather than working on the temple of the lord the symptom was that they abandoned the temple building their failure is not obeying the lord and depending on him that is the root cause of their spiritual sickness priority disorder So what is this do to whether to 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 us let me quickly mention and make it you know a bit more relevant to our time you know this is an age old cycle where we, where we often start with great enthusiasm but eventually abandon our good efforts uh, after past due to the difficulty involved when difficulty comes when things become a bit more challenging we tend to put them aside for another time our spiritual journey may be on a downward slope with our best days behind us don't we hear said oh we can't do this we used to do this 
this these things are not used as they used to be we hear all of this time and time again and therefore we leave our good efforts and intentions aside or it may be stuck in a cycle of starting and stopping repeatedly just like you know resolutions uh to improve your health going to gym and running a, and walking all of these and you start and stop you start and stop and i am the first to accept this i do that when there is a rain and cold wind coming to your face you say no just leave it we face discouragement from within and opposition from outside and it is easy for us to give up for instance jesus says to his followers but when the holy spirit comes upon you you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in jerusalem in all of judea and samaria and to the end of the earth you know spirit empowered witness to saving the world or saving a uh, saving good news for the people we all hear that and we sometimes start off very well uh, taking that as our vocation christian vocation but then along the way this journey hits bumps and turfs and then our enthusiasm fades perhaps we face opposition or discouragement causing us to neglect that power of the holy spirit maybe there is a specific sin in our life like jealousy dislike of someone hatred and gossip and all these things what the puritans used to uh, used to call as a besetting sin these besetting sins keep reappearing even after our best of efforts best of efforts to eliminate them and yet they come up again and again and we get discouraged it slows us down over time or we may become accustomed to it and therefore these things don't matter but actually they do if these things describe any of us this morning god is speaking to us personally and he speaks to us through hagai he says don't you see what is happening to you think very carefully about how we are living why we are working so hard to be happy why do our efforts fall flat you know dissatisfaction is yet another very popular and common disease people work all their life and they are never satisfied more and more more and more priority disorder is another one as i said we are too busy whenever we ask people for anything volunteering in one church and it's a common very common all around and uh, throughout the world we talk to people and say that we are too busy can't take it on anymore we have this we have this we have this and this church comes at last 
you know, way down the list. And the God is saying, do you know what's happening to you? Reconsider. We are searching for happiness in the wrong place. The people in Haggai's times were seeking what many in our time ask or seek, but it came up empty because they were not seeking God and his will. So what should be done? Well, think about this. How does Israel respond to the message of Haggai? This challenging message. They reconsidered their priorities. If you look at verse 12, it says, Then Zerubbabel and Joshua, and this is Joshua, by the way, this is not a Joshua of the Deuteronomy of Moses' time. It's a different Joshua. Joshua and all the people who returned from the exile in Babylonia did what the Lord, their God, told them to do. They were afraid and obeyed the prophet Haggai and the, Lord, uh, in the Lord's messenger. Take note of these things, please. Four things. He says in this passage, God sent Haggai. You know, God graciously sends his people to preach and warn the believers. That's his grace. They heard the message, the word of God. They obeyed. You know, they weren't here simply hearers. They obeyed. And so, hearing and obeying, both involved. Meaning they came to think more of God's opinion than those of the adversaries in the land around them. They feared the Lord and had displeasure more than the people around them. You know, many things we Christians in our churches and uh, around us do not do things because some of our friends or people around us might not be happy. Do we think about God that way? Would God be happy what I do? And what God is asking me to do? It says they feared the Lord's displeasure more than they feared anyone else. They are deeply concerned about God's opinion of them, not the people's opinion of them. Their faithfulness is towards God, not their friends and people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord. What a remarkable moment in Israel's history. It marked a period of national revival. And thanks to the preaching of Haggai and Zechariah. Many a times we tend to or lean towards hearing something that informs us what we already do or intend to do. We don't like challenging messages. Haggai challenges what was going on and he questions people's intentions and their plans. And that brings revival. God stirred the hearts of people leading to a great awakening and renewed obedience. Despite the opposition and hard work, the word of God inspired and uplifted their spirits, motivating them to do what they should be doing. That is obeying God. 
and we should long for God to work in our lives and in our churches in this way. We should desire for God to stir our spirits so that we obey him in fear and in reverence and to build his house first of all. I am absolutely certain that any of us sitting here or in our churches, every single person has some gift to offer in building up the body of Christ. There's no doubt about it in my mind, you know, about this. And yet, people don't offer voluntarily these gifts. Haggai says, think carefully. They carefully listened to God's word, carefully obeyed God's word, because if a new and a kind of new inner disposition, and I think this will be a great start in this new year, new commitment with the new renewed strength to build the church of God, the temple of God. We are the temple of God, Paul says, and every one of us. This new commitment of loving God and his word, reconsidering our priorities and building his house all of these things should be on our priority list this year, knowing the difficulties might remain. But as Paul says, if God is for us, who is against us? It matters little. If God is for us, no one can thought his plan. And so the message is clear of a challenge, but then it comes encouragement. And we will think about that next week. Amen. Let us continue worshiping God. And as we sing, love divine of love, excelling mission praise number 400. And 49, we will think about what God has said to us personally.
let us pray together loving god we thank you for your goodness we thank you that through world events you still continue to work on your purpose although as human beings are we are short sighted and we cannot see uh, things clearly but we believe that you are in control while things around us in the world go always in our mind wrong and so we think that there is no help available there is no one to care for us and yet we know that you are always there sometimes you don't understand why things happen the way they do why people suffer the way they do why there are wars and there are conflicts there is pain disease and so on and so forth we cannot comprehend your ways but lord we humbly submit ourselves we humbly say to you lord receive our prayers on behalf of those who suffer who go through difficult times who go through bereavement and so this morning we specifically remember Mary Clement's family we ask you to be with them comfort them grant them peace we pray for Ann Scott we thank you for your faithfulness to her and as she looks forward to this operation we ask you to be with her give her peace of mind reassurance of your love we pray for the doctors and nurses and all the other medical staff who might be involved give them wisdom and understanding enhance their skills and this we pray for the wider medical community as well we thank you for Jennifer and Prashan went well and we pray for her rapid recovery and everyone else in our congregation we specifically pray for them for spiritual renewal for physical health too and we now bring these offerings before you ask you to bless these offerings receive them as our token of love for you multiply them and use them for your glory in jesus name we pray amen we conclude our service this morning uh, mission praise number 857 a very well known hymn i the lord of sea and sky
now as you go from here may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit continue to be with you now and always amen